This is the orthodromic snare technique updated uh, August 20th, 2018. Uh, and uh, we'll go over this each step. Uh, this is a list of the equipment that's necessary. Um, and each of these uh, is important type of wires that you use, um, the snare. Uh, so all of these need to be available uh, to do this properly. Uh, and getting a wire through the collaterals, you need to make sure you have a polymer tip floppy wire. So the first step is to engage the target branch uh, with the tip of the vein selector and then advance a wire. Uh, and again, it's the light support polymer tip wire, which I, the one I like the best is the Choice PT floppy from Boston Scientific. And you can see here, as the wire is advanced, it gets a curl in it. Uh, but the vein selector provides enough support um, to get it at least in. Once the veins, once the wire's in somewhat, we would advance the vein selector over the wire and then add a second fresh wire to try to advance that um, through the collaterals. Now you don't want to remove the first wire because it'll support the vein selector and there's enough room in the phase selector for up to four different wires. One of the things you can do to facilitate advancing wires through the collaterals uh, is to use this microcatheter, um, Surecross microcatheter. And what you do there uh, is if you're having trouble getting the wire to go through the collaterals, you can slide this microcatheter over the wire that you have in, um, and then that provides additional support to advance the wire. Uh, you can also then exchange wires to get a fresh wire without a bent tip in it on it. Uh, so this microcatheter can make it possible to get through some difficult uh, collaterals, and that's illustrated here where you can see we have the microcatheter. This is, this is the microcatheter here. And um, we could actually can inject some contrast to see where it is. We then reposition it up here and we're able to get, the, get there through the collaterals. Um, so once you have the wire through the collaterals, you're gonna wanna put the snare in and the snare needs to fit beside uh, the vein selector. So we have a four French snare that has a 10 millimeter loop um, and it goes through a four French snare catheter. And so you will put that um, into the sheath uh, beside the five French vein selector. Now, as you advance this uh, snare catheter beside the vein selector, you have to be careful that the uh, vein selector, um, or, if that, or this could be a pacing lead here, doesn't get pushed forward as the sheath goes forward, or excuse me, as the snare goes forward. And that's what happened here. As the snare is advanced, um, you need to hold the vein selector, in this case it's a lead, in place, otherwise friction can cause the vein selector or the lead to advance. And so that's what happened here is, is that the, um, as the, here's the snare being advanced and the friction between the lead uh, and the snare catheter pushed the pacing lead up into the coronary sinus, causing it to buckle and destabilize. So we had to, we had to reposition the sheath um, and then reinsert the snare. How the wire is snared once it reaches the CS depends on whether the wire turns back up into the CS towards the great cardiac vein or if it heads out into the right atrium. In this case, you can see that the wire has turned back up into the CS, in which case it's a little easier to snare uh, because it's a captive audience within the coronary sinus. So we're here, we deposit the snare in the body of the CS, withdraw the wire, and then advance it into the open snare. Before you close the snare, uh, tightly, you want to make sure that you have lots of wire through it, 15 centimeters uh, at, t through the snare to make sure that you're closing the snare uh, on a stiff part of the wire. 
Uh, otherwise, you can pull the tip off or bend the wire. So there, now we have it closed. Uh, once you've snared the wire, you want to you want to get the sheath out of the coronary sinus, uh, so that you don't inadvertently uh, pull the um, the snared wire into the sheath. Uh, in other cases, the, here as illustrated here, the wire exits the middle cardiac vein and goes right out into the right atrium. Uh, when that happens, it can be a little more difficult to snare the wire. Uh, similar sequence, this time we, de we, we uh, place the snare in the coronary sinus, uh, and this time we'll withdraw the sheath out of the coronary sinus so that we can then, uh, with, the, with the sheath in the right atrium, the vein selector is held in place and the snare is positioned over the CS at the exit uh, vein, in this case it's the middle cardiac vein. So here comes the snare and we're going to put it right over top of the wire um, and in the AP and the RAO, AP and the LAO projection it looked good. We withdrew the wire and then advanced it and we thought it was in the snare but when we closed the snare you can see the snare is now back within the snare catheter. Um, the snare was not captured. So we looked in the REO projection and you can see that if we don't pull this, the sheath back and get the snare in a, uh, back a bit, um, that we can go through this sequence many times and never capture the snare, or never capture the wire with the snare. So uh, when, you're, when you're trying to capture the wire over the middle cardiac vein, it's really important to look in the REO projection because the other two can be misleading. And so here we're, we withdrew it and we advanced, re advanced back into the open snare, uh, closed the snare, and this time uh, we captured the wire. Okay, in some cases it can be very difficult to snare the wire as it exits the MCV uh, into the right atrium. So if you're having a lot of trouble, you can put the snare right into the the vessel that it comes out of. Uh, to do that, you put a glide wire into the snare catheter uh, and then advance the glide wire uh, into the branch. So you're here you can see um, we have the wire, the angioplasty wire coming out of the middle cardiac vein and the glide wire going into the middle cardiac vein and the sheath is back here. This is the vein selector. And so we're going to advance, slide the uh, snare catheter uh, over the glide wire into the middle cardiac vein. And then once the, the snare catheter is in the middle cardiac vein, we'll take the loop of the snare and insert it uh, into the snare catheter. And so now the loop is in the middle cardiac vein, we withdraw the wire and then re-advance it into the open snare and then close the snare. And again we have um, 15 centimeters of wire through the snare before we close it up tight. One, one other final option if you're having trouble is uh, you can replace uh, the snare catheter with a 4 French angled catheter, in this case the KA2, um, and that gives you some greater ability. So rather than the snare being inside the traditional snare catheter, the snare is inside the KA2. And that gives you uh, the ability to, to position the KA2 um, where, you want, where you want the snare to go. Uh, remember, when you're snaring the wire, you want to make sure that there's plenty of wire through the uh, snare so that you don't pull the tip off uh, or bend the wire and so 15 centimeters is just about right. You want to make sure it's nice and tight. Um, so to, to do that, you, you actually take the hemostat and you push against the hub of the sheath and uh, pull tight on the snare loop. Um, and you can actually see the snare catheter accordion a bit to tell you that you got plenty of uh, tension on, this, on the snare.
And again, as, as I said before, you don't want to pull the snare snared wire into the sheath as I did here. You can see here's the wire coming out. The middle cardiac vein has been snared, goes up into the sheath and then back out into the coronary sinus, uh, which bends the wire and it can be almost impossible, if not impossible, to get the um, to get the wire uh, through back through the pacing lead. So if you do bend the wire, my recommendation is not to release the snare and try to pull it through uh, the bent tip through the pacing lead because you can actually fracture the tip off um, and, and or not be able to get the, get the lead out. So um, I, what I recommend is um, to advance a microcatheter um, over uh, the existing re remove the pacing lead um, keep it keep the cat keep the snare uh, on the wire replace the pacing lead advance a sure cross catheter uh, and then this way you can we you can pull the uh, the snared wire down through the microcatheter with the snare, uh, making sure that the, the microcatheter is flushed. Um, and having the microcatheter uh, prevents the snare from, the, the wire from getting stuck inside the collaterals. And again, this is how you snare, this is how you make sure the wire is nice and secure. Um, you're we're pushing against the hub and pulling on the snare tip on the snare. Um, once you once you have the uh, wire snared, you're going to want to. You can put traction on the wire. And advance the pacing lead. Now, when you do that, that's going to put tension on the snare, and that would tend to pull the snare this direction um, as you put traction on it. And you can see here that as I as I'm advancing, trying to advance the pacing lead, I'm putting tension on the wire, and that actually pulls the snare down into the middle cardiac vein, which doesn't hurt anything, but you really lose stability, um, and you lose your uh, your ability to create tension. So, uh, what I suggest doing. Uh, once you have everything positioned before you put traction on the wire is to put a hemostat, the second hemostat right here at the hub. Um, one other thing to watch out for uh, is where the sheath is located. Um, again, you, you want to get the sheath, once you've snared the wire, it's a good idea to get the sheath out of the coronary sinus. And you can see here that the sheath has been advanced uh, up into the coronary sinus, and it's actually uh, right at the right at the crux of the bifurcation of the target vein um, and the body of the coronary sinus, uh, which creates a stenosis and it prevents the lead from advancing into the branch, even though you have it snared. So, what you have to do here is is bring it back, and then we're able to advance. Once the wire is snared and the, and the lead is in place, thresholds are tested, um, and the thresholds can change slightly once you, once the uh, the wire is removed, uh, but phrenic pacing doesn't change. So to prevent any uh, chance of leadless modulment, once the sheath is removed, um, so what I do is I peel the sheath away first. Um, and then once the sheath is removed, then we open the, the snare like this. The snare is now open, so we can put traction on the wire this time because uh, it's no longer captured by the snare. The wire pulls back into the pacing lead. Um, we then uh, remove, as we hold the lead in place, the snare is removed. Uh, and then you can uh, put your final adjustments of slack uh, on the lead. Um, in some cases, uh, even with the snare, uh, 
even with the wire snared, the lead will not advance, and this is one of those cases. Uh, so you can just pull the lead back, uh, put a, a balloon out, and do venoplasty, and then you're able to put the lead in. Now let's reiterate this point. You want to make sure you get 15 centimeters of wire through the snare so you don't pull the tip off uh, or bend the lead. Again, uh, you want to put lots of tension on it so that it doesn't come loose. And if you're on the stiff part, you're good. The third part, the third point to reiterate is that you don't want to pull the snared wire into the sheath because that will bend it and you'll have a great deal of difficulty uh, getting the wire uh, back out through the pace, tip of the pacing lead. So I strongly advise that if you do bend the wire, uh, that you uh, use the microcatheter. Again, don't release the snare to try to pull the bent tip through the pacing lead uh, because the wire will fracture and tip embolize uh, or you have to start over again. So that's where the microcatheter comes in. So if you do bend the wire like we did here, don't release the snare, remove the pacing lead, advance the sure cross microcatheter through the collaterals um, all the way up to the snare, keep the microcatheter flushed, uh, then remove the wire by simultaneously advancing the wire into the microcatheter and withdrawing the wire up into the sheath using the snare. Uh, once you get the wire out, you can, uh, through the microcatheter, you can put a fresh microcatheter back through the collaterals and resnare it and you're good to go. So I hope this is helpful um, and it's a very powerful technique, quite useful for uh, difficult venous anatomy.